from the moment a crazy driver sped off with a cop on his hood. Bridge! Put on the bridge! To the moment a man suddenly attacked a cop with a knife. Here are some of the craziest body cam moments of all time. Starting from the case of this guy who launched an all out attack on an officer with a box cutter. Stop, stop. On the 16th of December, 2023, Grand Rapids police officers received a call from a local business alleging that a man was harassing customers and trying to steal some items from the store. Later that morning, an officer met some guy matching his description at Inn Street and decided to investigate him. But the officer was in for a big surprise, as he had no idea that he was just about to experience one of the craziest mornings ever. Take your hand out of your pocket. No, I'm going to check you for weapons, though. I have one. Don't touch anything. What do you have? Um, uh, a box cutter. Keep your hand on top of your head. Turn around and face the wall. Face right. the fence. Are you going to me? Yeah, I'm going to take your box cutter away from you. Right here. Don't touch it. I'm going to take it. Turn, put your hands on the fence. 17, 16. 17, Don't put your hand in your pocket. This guy's got a box cutter. I've got a drawn down on him. We're in the uh, north alley of Lion. Just keep your hands in your face. Everything was going smoothly until the guy decided that he'd rather go down fighting than to let the officer detain him. It was at this point that the situation got heated. Are you going to hey, what the me? Stop, stop, please! The suspect suddenly attacked the officer, leaving him with no choice but to defend himself. He fired at him thrice, hitting the suspect in his chest and stomach, causing him to fall to the ground. 17 to 16, shots fired, shots fired. The police believed the suspect had sustained injuries and would therefore behave calmly. However, they were about to witness an even greater surprise. Like a zombie, this dude sprung up from the ground and what he did next was absolutely insane. He's got a box Where's cutter that? somewhere on the ground. Hey, get it back! Watch crossfire, watch crossfire. Box cutter's on the ground. Get less lethal. Taser, taser. Wait. Yep. Hang on. He's found on the alley. Is that going to be on line or on innocent? It is. You're down on the ground. He's, he's claiming he's got a knife. All right. He can't get anywhere other than out here. All right. He's going to go less lethal. Right, yep. Get down. Do it now. Once again, the suspect launched a second attack on an officer, ignoring all orders to get down. Realizing that this guy had completely gone psycho, the officer discharged a firearm once again, this time hitting him in his arm, and he fell to the ground in pain. In the end, he survived the incident and was taken to the hospital where he was treated for his injuries before being arrested and taken to jail. Although that guy was crazy, he wasn't as crazy as this man who also launched a violent attack on a police officer, this time during a traffic stop. Where are you? On the 3rd of June, 2022, a Naperville police officer made a traffic stop at McDowell's Road, Naperville. But he didn't know that what was meant to be a simple traffic stop would eventually turn out to be one of his craziest stops ever. All right, if you can take a picture and send it to me. Why are you doing? Why are you? Just at the moment the officer was just concluding with the driver he had pulled over, a Ford vehicle suddenly made a stop beside him. Although cops are usually very careful when they make traffic stops, he had no idea that the driver of this vehicle had gone completely nuts. The man suddenly exited his car and without warning lunged at the officer with a hatchet. 
Seeing that an otherwise normal situation had become life-threatening, the officer fired six shots in self-defense, hitting him critically. So he's just been attacked. They just shots fired, shots fired. Don't move. Don't move. At this point, the officer was deeply shocked and couldn't believe that a routine traffic stop could suddenly endanger his life. Okay. You good? Yeah. You good? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, oh take a breath. God, take a breath. He pulled up beside me. He came out with a hatchet, man. This car? Yeah. Right here. Okay. Holy shit. You want to get somebody up there? Oh my god. Are you? Where, where are you? Are you good? No, yeah, I'm good, dude. I okay. backed up, okay. dude. Okay. Take a breath. Oh my god. Who's this guy? This is the who this, stop? I, I, I kid on a stop. Hey, this kid's on a stop. Yeah, dude. Let's let have him sit here for a while. Man, he's okay. He's just on a traffic stop. This guy. Oh my god, dude. In the end, the suspect was taken by ambulance to the hospital where he was eventually pronounced dead. Now, if you thought the axe wielding psycho was crazy, he was nothing compared to this man who had a huge quantity of very illegal items in his vehicle. Holy. Yeah. <laughs> On the 18th of September 2023, an officer found a mysterious young man asleep in his car. At the time she approached him, she had no idea that she would be making the most shocking discovery of her life. Sheriff's office. Hey, Sheriff's office. Right here. You okay? What's going on? I'm trying not to. What? I mean, you're not doing a real good job, man. Huh? I'm not doing a real good job, baby. Okay, well, there's no need for an attitude. You okay? Yeah. I don't have no attitude. Huh? So I don't have an attitude. Okay. I stopped and to take a nap and. Okay. And, uh, hang on, I, for, I forgot I passed out behind the gas station. I, uh, I asked the guy, I stopped, and I was like, man, let me take a nap out back. The guy from the gas station or the well, there was vehicle, a little... the auto shop? No, not. Not the bottle shop, the dude at the gas station, and he's okay. like, we'll, "We'll be here like 11 or 12." And uh, and uh, I was like, "All right, I'll, I'll just take a nap for like an hour, or nothing like like three o'clock, I guess." I got you. Sorry, try not to blind you. What's your first name? Uh, Justin. Justin. Yeah. Do you have a middle initial? Huh? Middle initial. Middle uh, name. Uh. Um, middle initial? Oh. Yeah. For some reason, it was obvious that something was off about him, so the officer questioned him further. Uh, it's not that hard. Unless you're trying to make up a name. No, man. Well, I mean, why, why are y'all messing with me? Huh? I got permission to be here. I don't know that. I got a call here about an alarm, checking out the property, making sure everything's secure, oh, yeah. and I find you passed out in the passenger seat of the vehicle, and you're giving me a hard time and giving me your name, and it's past the hours of operation. It's not looking too good for you, bud, so. What, well, I mean, what time is it? Nope, oh, my watch is dead, but it's probably 3.30ish, maybe. In the morning? Mm-hmm. Good job, man. Yeah. Oh, um. So, what's your middle name? Can I, like, can I get myself together? Like, oh, um, my name's Will. I don't, I don't know what. Like, Justin? No, 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 no. Wilson. Wilson? Yes, ma'am. Do me a favor, Wilson. Keep your hands up on that dash. Uh -huh. Nope. Sit up. Sit up. Keep your hands on that dash where I can see him. You understand? Eventually, the officers decided to search his vehicle. However, what they didn't know was that they were about to make the greatest discovery of their careers. Holy. Yeah. Hmm. Hey. That's a lot of fun. Huh? 
in the vehicle was about 338 grams of worth about $50,000 in the black market and enough to kill about 100,000 people. Other items found in his vehicle were a loaded syringe, an electronic scale, and various tools like screwdrivers, hammers, and wire cutters, which were commonly used by burglars. In the end, he was charged with possession of tools with intent of burglary and possession of drug paraphernalia. This was in addition to his original arrest charges of giving a false name to a law enforcement officer, loitering or prowling and resisting an officer. Agreeing that this dealer was awful, he was nothing compared to this man who nearly shingled a cop to death during a traffic stop. <laughs> On the 16th of October 2022, a Camden County Sheriff's Office deputy pulled over a man who was later identified as Leonard Cure for driving above the speed limit. However, the officer had no idea that he would be battling for his life moments later. Step out! Get out! Get out! Put your hands back here! I ain't doing Put your damn hands back here. Who are you? Staff Sergeant Alder Sheriff's Office. My name is Yahweh. I don't care. Step to the rear of this vehicle. In the name of who? In the name of the law of the state of Georgia. Step back here. Now you're getting tased. I'm going. Watch me now. Put your hands on the back of that truck. Do you see that? Put your hands on the back of that truck. Back of the truck. Both hands. Turn around. Realizing that this guy had absolutely no intention of obeying his orders, the officer decided to tase him. But instead of immobilizing him, the taser somehow released the beast inside of him. It was at this point that things escalated dramatically. Hands behind your back! Put your hands behind your back! Leonard suddenly attacked the officer and tried to strangle him. They both struggled for a while with Leonard almost having an upper hand. This left the officer with no choice but to use his arm. He fired one shot, hitting Leonard in the stomach, and he fell to the ground. Sit down! An even more shocking fact was that despite being seriously injured, Leonard continued to stubbornly disobey lawful orders. Stay down! Do not give up! Stay down! Stay down! Stay down! Give me shot first! Suspect down! You send me help! Stay down! Stay down! Stay down! In the end, he was taken to the hospital where he was eventually pronounced dead. Similar to Leonard, this man, later identified as Javier, also attacked a cop. However, unlike Leonard, he used a more inventive approach by unexpectedly lunging at the officer with a well-concealed knife. On the 29th of March 2016, a police officer in Glendale, Ohio, spotted a strange man walking on the highway and stopped him to interrogate him. Little did the officer know that this man was a who was prepared to go to any lengths to evade justice. Hey, you know that to Cincinnati, right? Oh, you can't walk on the highway. I'm sort of a so you got any ID on you? No, man. You don't have any ID? Where are you coming from? Uh, Dayton. You're coming from Dayton? Yeah. Where you been staying at? Uh, staying? Yeah. No, I just came and looking for a taxi 
bumper or something like that. How'd you get down this far? Uh, the Chinese crews. Okay. Somebody was supposed to bring me out there, but she didn't appear. Somehow, the officer felt like something was off about this stranger. Following standard protocols, the officer decided to walk the strange man back to his cruiser to search him. It was at this point that the man decided to show the officer who he truly was. Keep your hands out of your pockets for me. Here, let's walk up to my cruiser real quick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have you place your uh, hands on the back of my cruiser. I'm going to pat you down for officer safety. I'm going to pat you down for officer Keep it, keep it, keep it up. Despite the officer trying to be calm with Javier, he continued to be Understanding that the situation had now escalated to a life or death scenario, the officer fired a shot, hitting Javier in the abdomen in the belief that it would ward off the danger. Or so he thought. Sir, the King 11 shots fired, shots fired! Sir, miss squad, I shot one, he has a knife! Sir, get down! Sir, get down! Sir, get down! Get down! Get down! Get down! Stay down! Stay down! Stay down! Stay down! Stay down! Stay down! Drop the knife! Drop the knife! Drop the knife! For some reason, it appeared like Javier had lost all desire to live and wanted to meet his end at the hands of the officers. Watch your gun, watch your gun. Stop! Just stop! Just stop! No! Get on the ground! Just get down! Sir, please just get down! Sir! Sir, please! Drop the knife! No, sir! Let us help you! Drop the knife! Let us help you! Sir, drop the knife! Please drop the knife! Please drop the knife! Sir, please drop the knife! He was eventually stopped with the stun gun and the cops arrested him. Drop the knife! Drop it! The officers later found out that Javier was a wanted man who had apparently ended his roommate's life. At the time the cops stopped him on the highway, he was a fugitive on the run from the law. In the end, Javier was taken to the hospital where he was treated. He was eventually charged with the and felonious assault. Next, we go to the case of these two well-dressed gentlemen known as Stephen Cox and Scott Green, who are about to show us why looks can be very deceiving. On the 17th of April 2019, an Arkansas police officer pulled over an SUV because it was driving a bit too recklessly. When he pulled over the vehicle, he had no clue that it would lead to one of the most remarkable discoveries of his entire career. Hey, I did. I'm uh, Trooper Shore State Police. We just stopped back. He's following that vehicle in front of that truck a little bit closer when he's exiting right there. Uh, uh, Let's get the driver's license. Sure. Right here, Mike. I've got one. Hang around, Steve. That's no worry. Yeah. 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 They appeared very nervous, and the SUV was eventually discovered to be a rental. When he asked about their occupation, they told him that they were in fugitive recovery. So the officer decided to investigate further. Come back with me, have a seat real quick, and I get you here in just a second, okay? Yeah, just come on back with me. Come back. Yeah, yeah, come back here with me.
Okay, weapons right there? I have a pocket knife that goes, it's in my inside right here. Okay, just, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, you just have seat, the front seat there. So what y'all have to do? Oh, man. You always travel in suit and ties? Well, I mean, yeah, we always dress nice. His brother used to own the business, and uh, he passed away, and he always, like, insisted that we were always, you know, dressed nicely, like, ready for court or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I know that feeling. So, just, uh, you just flying back, it looks like? I'm assuming here. I um, yeah, we're flying back. Okay. Okay. What, what business, y'all? It's actually Bail 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 Bonds business. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. How long ago was that there for? Um, like three days. What's the guy's name? You go ahead. Um, well, there's actually um, there was two two guys that were going after this guy, Derek Colombo. Oh, bad guy. He's a piece of work, man. Really? Like a stalker, like guys burning down like his ex-girlfriend's door, like all kinds of just bad shit on Oklahoma. Really? Younger guy. Let me school with Mark Homa, Tahlequah. Oh yeah. To make matters worse, the suspect decided to give the cop untrue details about his criminal history. When I was in high school, Gordon. what's the name of it? Mark Homa. It's no longer though. I was gonna say I don't. I went to uh, Northeastern State up there in Tahlequah. Oh, no kidding, really? Yeah, I got yeah. my degree up there. Wow. Yeah, they were like NAIA champs in football back then. I remember. Yeah. yeah. They used to be called the River Hawks. Uh, no, 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 the Red Man. And they changed it. Politically to, correct? Yeah, yeah, to the River Hawks, sure enough. You ever been in trouble for anything or nothing like that? Or? Like 20 years ago, I was in trouble because um, my friend let me use a car and actually I got joyriding, but that was like 20 years ago. Was it? Okay. Yeah. 17 years ago. 23. I got you out of California with me. <clears throat> On a white male, last name is Green. First name is Scott. Middle name is Samuel. 790427, check. So you guys are supposed to have tornadoes, huh? The second yeah. one is Cox, C O X. First name is Stephen. Middle name is Mark. 620602. To see if these men were telling the truth, the cop decided that it was best to question them separately, and he found out that their stories weren't the same. The first guy had stated that they had been in Virginia for three days, while his partner stated that they were there for a day. How long ago was that there for? Good How long ago was that there for? Come right back. How y'all get back? This is a one way. Yeah, we're going to fly back. Oh, y'all? Okay. If we are, then we should go over there. I see. Can y'all just kind of find it? Yeah, we're not going to sound like we're going to. No, I'm not nervous at all. Really. He is. He's real. I'm nervous, nervous because when I'm driving these people out here, man, they drive like nuts, Crazy, and cutting people off. These trucks yeah. like ramming you to the side. Uh, man, when when look I'm at my hands, man. Just from the air conditioner and like, yeah, like all bloodshot. Like just. Uh. When I'm in my personal vehicle, it's yeah. Yeah. <sighs> no, uh, no drug. No, no. Yeah, no. yeah. Would you care for yeah, search? Search, search, search vehicle? Make sure. Uh, I don't care. Okay. Um, did you rent it or he rented it? Yeah, well, we both signed it. At this point, it had become clear that these men were hiding something, so the officer decided to search their vehicle. Uh, he's going to search you guys' vehicle real quick, and I'll get you guys out in just a second, okay? Yeah, y'all can just hang right up there if you want. Right. Yeah. No, 
I don't ever tell any man nothing like that. Mm. Hey, I'll, I'll explain everything here in just a minute. What I was doing. Don't get in trouble with nothing, okay? okay. We just. I'm just uh, I'm wondering because I was asleep and I was like, what, what's that? Yeah, you know. Okay. Yeah, y'all just both extremely nervous, so. While searching the vehicle, nothing appeared unusual at first. However, it was when he checked the spare tire compartment that he was met with the shocker of his life. He had just found 37 pounds of cane. And in addition to that, a large sum of cash. Things immediately escalated at this point. Sit down. Sit down. You have no weapons on you? No, I don't have weapons on you. Just that one that I pulled you can you send headquarters my contact with Trying to fill you up here, do Chains on your back. Thanks, Here, turn my In the end, Stephen Cox was sentenced to 10 years in federal prison, followed by five years of supervised release on the count of possession with intent to distribute more than five kilograms of his partner, Scott Green, was sentenced to four years in prison, followed by three years of supervised release on the same count. Agree that these men were all. They weren't as evil as Michael Webb, who killed an eight-year-old child from the arms of her mother. Upon receiving the disturbing report, the police immediately swung into action and began searching for the child. Fortunately, a concerned citizen gave them a tip that Webb was possibly holding the child captive in a room at the Wood Springs Suites Hotel. On the 19th of May, 2019, officers stormed the alleged hotel with everything they got. When they arrived at the hotel room, they carried an immense weight of anxiety in their hearts, desperately clinging to a glimmer of hope that the child, at the very least, would be found alive. Open the door. Open it now. Break it. Open it. Hands. Let me see your hands. Step out here. Step out. Step out. Get up. When the officers eventually broke into the room for a split second, it felt like their greatest fears had materialized. The child was nowhere to be found, or so they thought. Hey, here she is. Got her. We got her. We got her. We got her. Hey, buddy. Bring it out. Bring it out. 
We have her. Oh we need an EMT. Get, get cold med star. Yes, yes. No, 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 don't worry about your clothes. Don't worry oh, about your clothes. Oh, oh, oh. We got a towel? Yeah, yeah. We got a towel? Oh. We have it. Can we cover her up? Can we cover her up? Yeah. With something? Here, just Here you go, baby. Can we get her out? Come here. Come here. Let's go. Come on, sweetheart. In the end, Webb was charged with one count of six counts of enhanced, two counts of he was eventually convicted and sentenced to life in prison. Just like Michael Webb, who went into hiding after he this guy also was in hiding, but unlike Webb, he was hiding himself in one of the most unexpected places and was armed and ready for war. On the 15th of November 2022, officers were notified that a wanted man was hiding in a travel trailer in Oklahoma. After arriving at the scene, the officers thought that this was going to be like all the other situations. However, what they didn't know was that the 38-year-old Timothy Johnson was waiting for them, armed and prepared for war. Sammy! What? Huh? Good. She told me. Go ahead. It's her trailer. Sammy! This is the police department! If you're in here, you need to make yourself known! this point nothing had really happened however that was because they hadn't checked the last possible hiding spot it was when they did that that the situation spiraled out of control Cody you got cover out there while we do this Come out with your hands up. 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 Inside the trailer, I'm hitting the face. Timothy, you need to come out with your hands up. Back out of the trailer. Back out of the trailer. You all go first. Go. Go. I got you. Go. Lock, you're injured. Go. Cover the trailer. After stepping inside the trailer for the second time, the officers got into another exchange with the wanted man. It is here that Officer David Malk gets hit by what he initially thinks is a bullet. Later, it was confirmed to be flying debris from the exchange, which hit him in the face. As for the suspect, he was found deceased under the bed. Next, we go to the case of this teenager, 
who was caught hiding something truly disturbing in the back of his trunk. Um, I gotta get his name here. I popped the trunk, saw there's a dead body in the trunk. On the 29th of July, 2020, Louisiana State Troopers pulled over a vehicle that was running way above the speed limit. However, the trooper had no idea that he was about to make one of the most disturbing discoveries of all time. Hey, step back here with me, man. How are you? Hey, good afternoon. I'm Trooper Nielsen, Louisiana State Police. The reason why I stopped here was for speeding. You know how fast you're going? 73 and a 55, so it's 18 over the limit. Uh, do you have your driver's license? No, sir. Do you have a driver's license? No, sir. Then why are you driving? I was just okay. going home. Do you have any weapons on you? No, sir. Uh, it's, it's okay. I was just asking. What's your name, man? Michael. Michael. Is anybody with you? No, sir. It's just me. You have insurance? Uh, show me your insurance. Whose car is this, man? Big brother's car. Your big brother's? For some reason, it was obvious that this young man was trying to hide something. He appeared very nervous and avoided eye contact with the officer. When asked about the ownership of the vehicle, he claimed it belonged to his elder brother. A statement that the officer would later confirm to be false. You smoking weed today? Uh, look at me. I did early. I'm not high right now. Okay. All right, we'll take a look at you. Do you have an ID? Do you have any ID? Is there any weed in the car, man? Let's don't stop. Step, step here. Step here to me. Look at me, Michael. Look at, make eye contact with me. Step out here. Step over here. Is there any weed in the car? Yes or no? It's just a doobie in the ashtray, like. Okay. Other than that, dizzy. Anything like, else? Dizzy. All right. You be honest with me, I'll be honest with you. I ain't looking for no roach. You hear me? Yes, sir. Is there anything else in there? This I promise. Okay, it's in the ashtray? In that yes, cup sir. thing? Yes, sir. Anything else? Yes, sir. Okay, When's the, when did you puff last? This is Be loud. honest. Because I'm a drug recognition expert. About an hour ago. Okay. Okay, no, we're gonna, we're, I'm gonna look at you. Somehow, as much as he tried to maintain a cool composure, he kept giving the officer some more hints to indicate that there might have been more to him than his young, innocent looks. All right, where are you headed right now? I was headed to, I was headed back home. Okay. Where's home? What's your address? No, stop, stop. Come here. Where do you live? It's easy. It's easy to answer this. Where do you live? You, you don't know how to drive to your house? I was coming from there, how I got lost. So what's the address? No. What? You don't know your address? No, sir. I'm okay, here. come back here. Come back here. All right, prop up on this bumper right here, okay? Just sit down right here, okay? All right. All right. You've admitted there's there's a small amount of marijuana in the car, and I've smelled it. It's probable cause. Can I take a look in your car? It's yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Right. Nothing. Okay. It's your brother's car? It's your brother's car? Hey, come here. Put that, put that phone on that hood. You know, you ain't gonna sit here and be texting behind my back while I'm sitting here in this car. Get on that, get on that car. As the officer searched the vehicle, he noticed some bullet holes in the vehicle, confirming his suspicions that this young man was really trying hard to hide something. However, what he didn't know was that this was nothing compared to what he would eventually find. Hey, all right, now, step here. When did all this happen? When did all that happen? That happened. When? My brother, he said it How happened. How long ago? Like, Days? Yeah, like, Okay, days. come back. Just leave this here. Come back here. Just stay right here in front of my car. Is this your wrench? Uh, no, sir.
At this point, it started becoming clear that this young man had been lying all along. All right, let me ask you something. Did you give me your right name? Yes, sir. What's your name? Michael. You got plats in your head? No, sir. OK. Where, you, where do you live? Be honest to me. Monroe? Yes, sir. Richwood? Yes, sir. You don't live in Winsboro? No, sir. Why would you try to bluff me on that? Why would you lie to me on that? Because I already knew that before this guy said something. What's up? Talk to me. You better stop lying to me right now. You're going to be in jail. I'm just going, I'm just going to my sister's house. To your sister's? So when I kept asking you where you live, you don't even know because this ain't even your house. You better get some act right in you and stop lying to some act right in you and stop lying to me or I swear to God you're fixing to go to jail. Do you understand? Yes, sir. That's the last freaking lie you better tell me. What's your last name? Who took the car? Who took that car from whoever it belonged to? He gave me permission to drive He, Mike gave you permission to drive this car? Yes, sir. Who gave him permission? This is Say with him, please. How are you? The last part of the vehicle that had been unchecked up to this point was the car trunk. When the officer eventually looked into it, he was totally dumbfounded by what he found lying in it. It was at this point that this young criminal realized that he was neck deep in trouble. I'm gonna do the obvious thing I want to do. Hey. Yep, put your hands behind your back. Don't move. In the end, he was charged with. If you thought this teenager was crazy, he was nothing compared to this guy who thought it was a wise idea to disobey an officer's orders, even with a gun pointed at him. Get on your knees. Get on your knees. Now, get on your knees, dude. On November 2nd, 2022, Police received a 911 call from a seemingly troubled citizen saying that a person wearing a blue hoodie just pulled a gun on him. 911, what is the address of your emergency? Uh, 410 Poplar. Hey, um, a man in a blue hoodie just pulled a gun on me. Okay, and is he still there? Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's running away. Right running away? All right, and you said, what was that address again? 410 Poplar. Okay, you said a man in a blue hoodie? Yep. Is he white, black, Hispanic? He's white. Which way did he go? Uh, I'm not quite sure. He's, he's running right now. Okay, is he going towards Hoagland or towards Fairfield? I, I don't know. Okay. And do you know that guy? No. Okay. Okay, and what's your callback number? Hello? Hang up, yeah. As it would later turn out, Wyatt Beckler was actually describing himself while making the call. Officers were immediately called out to investigate the scene, all of them heavily armed. Officer Andrew Fry was the first one on the scene and spotted the supposed suspect instantly. I got a mail in a blue hoodie right here at uh, Poplar and Hoagland. Fry tells the hooded Beckler to get his hands up and walk towards him. However, it seems like he has other plans. Let me see your hands real quick. Come back here. Hey, come back here. Get your hands up. Get your hands up. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands now. He's walking northbound and Hoagland is refusing commands. With a gun pointed right at him, you might think Beckler would start to question his little game with the police. A rational person would most likely think, maybe this isn't worth getting killed over. However, Beckler decides to raise the stakes as he continues to defy Officer Fry's orders, even at gunpoint. Let me see your f***ing hands now! Get your hands up where I can see them! Keep your hands up and walk back to me now! I got one at gunpoint. Keep coming to me, keep your hands up! 
Face away from me and keep your hands up. Face away from me and keep your hands up. No one knew if Beckler was suicidal at this point. However, he was cold as ice. He kept pushing it one step further every time, testing Officer Fry's patience. Keep walking back. Keep walking back. Stop there. Get on your knees now. Keep your hands on your head. Get on your knees. Stop. Get on your knees. Get on your knees. Get on your knees. Now. Beckler is now a few meters away from the officer, but still doesn't seem to budge. He is told to get on his knees, but refuses to do it. And it is here that something mind-boggling happens. Get on your knees. Get on your knees. Now. Get on your knees, dude. Just as Officer Fry tells the suspect to get on his knees, it looks like he starts reaching for something in his pockets. This is probably the dumbest thing you can do when you're at gunpoint. Something like this was bound to happen. Fry put three bullets in the back of Wyatt Buckler. He was quickly rushed to the hospital, but unfortunately succumbed to his injuries on the operating table. He was only 18 years old. A knife was recovered from the same pocket that Beckler was seen reaching into just before he was shot. Officer Fry was cleared of any wrongdoing. A few days after the incident, it was revealed that Beckler had watched a YouTube video with another person who was killed doing exactly what he did. Wyatt Beckler was a calculated individual who knew exactly what he was doing when he called the cops on himself. If you thought Wyatt Beckler was crazy, then you should meet a Joseph DiLoretto, who also had a d wish. On the 16th of July, 2023, a Manchester police officer responded to a report of violence at North Main Street. At the time she arrived at the scene, she had no idea that she would be dealing with one of the most daring suspects she had ever encountered. Hey, hey, fuck you. Hey, come here, come here. What's come up? Come inside. Come inside. What's happening? Why are we yelling at each other? Uh, don't, uh, don't call me a bitch. Come on, inside. Come inside. Come here. Come here. Shut up. Stop. 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 Come here. Stop. Come here. Stop. Come here. Stop. 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 The cops had tried to tase the suspect at first, but clearly it didn't work. Still armed with a knife, he charged towards her, leaving her with no alternative but to discharge her weapon, critically injuring him in the process. Shots fired, multiple shots fired. <laughs> I got the knife, I got the knife. In the end, he was charged with threatening in the second degree, a criminal attempt to commit assault in the first degree, and assault of public safety personnel. Although Joseph DeLoretto was crazy, he was nothing compared to this man who was also armed with a knife, but was even more with the cops. Stop! 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 On the 26th of March, 2021, Louisville officers were interviewing a suspect later identified as Brian Beach, who was suspected of arson. When he was later notified that he was being arrested and charged with the crime, he fled. However, his escape from the law was short-lived, as he was later spotted around Maple Court. When the cops apprehended him, they had no idea the lengths he would go to to avoid being captured. Fresh, hey. Stop. 
He's, he's armed with a knife. Suicide by cop. What's the address? Armed with a knife. What? I'm going taser. What is it? Okay. Behind three maple court, he's cutting his throat. Behind three maple court. Stop, man. Stop. Stop. Please stop. 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 He's trying to cut himself. Taser. Him. Taser. Him. Stop. Stop. Talk to us. Stop. The cops tried to tase him, but the taser did not work on him as he had used the trash can as a shield. It was at this point that he launched an all-out attack on the officers, leaving them with no choice but to discharge their firearms. You good? Are you good? Are you good? Connor, are you good? Get gloves! Get gloves! Three metal cords. You good? You good, Connor? Are you good? Connor? Yes. Is Connor hit? Bag on him. Are you okay? Connor, are you all right? Connor, are you hit? Three, three. You're okay? Are you hit? All right. Lay down, man. Lay down. Lay down. Connor, are you hit? I'll go get him. We got a handcuff. Where's the knife? Oh, he threw it. He threw it over here. In the end, he was charged with fleeing or evading police, resisting arrest, third degree assault of a police slash probation officer of a police officer. If you thought Brian Beach was insane, that you should meet Dennis Guida, the king of psychos, who sped off at a traffic stop with an officer on his hood. We're on the bridge! Stop the on the 5th of March 2021, an officer pulled over a vehicle in Carroll, Iowa. The driver had a warrant on him for his forgery case in Illinois. However, what was meant to be a simple traffic stop would eventually turn out to be one of the most life-threatening stops the officer ever made. How's it going, guys? Hey, Dennis. Hey, um... I hate to be the one to tell you this, but it sounds like you got a warrant out of Illinois. Okay, you got your ID on you? Sorry? Okay. Do you have anything on you? Okay. Why don't you step out of the car until we can identify you? You got anything on your person, man? Do you got anything on you? Any weapons or anything like that? What's up? Awesome. Okay, go ahead and step out. At this point, the suspect had come to the realization that he was already in a dangerous situation. But what the officers did not know was how wild he could actually be. Step out. Hello? Come on, step out, man. Yeah, reach. Unbuckle your seatbelt and step out of the vehicle. Yeah, what's up? Stop the car, man! Stop the car! Stop the car! Stop the fing car! Stop the fing car! Stop the fing car! Stop it! Stop the car! Stop the car! Get off the Put on the goddamn brakes! Put on the fing brakes! Put on the brakes! Stop the fing car! Stop the fing car, man! Jesus!
The officer eventually broke a vertebrae in his back when the car hit a ditch and he fell off. In the end, Guida was charged with injury by vehicle. He was convicted and sentenced to five years in prison.